There's no doubt that few movies will make you swoon quite like The Notebook, but re-watch it as a grown-up and you might notice a few things you didn't spot before. Here are some things only adults notice in The Notebook. By the end of the movie, it's easy to feel all warm and starry-eyed about Noah and Ali's romance. But once you go back and take a closer look at their story, cracks in the facade begin to appear. In fact, their relationship is actually pretty volatile. There's an entire montage devoted to how they never actually get along and often get into heated arguments, not to mention the name-calling. You tell me when I'm being an arrogant son of a bitch, and I tell you when you're being a pain in the ass. Which you are, 99% of the time. When they break up, Allie is obviously distraught, but that doesn't mean she has any right to go around physically accosting Noah like she does. The fact that fans can overlook the aggression in Noah and Allie's relationship points to another problem, and that's that they're put on something of a pedestal. When Time Out asked a team of experts to name movies with the most unhealthy views on love, The Notebook made the cut. Therapist Gurpreet Singh chided Noah and Allie's romance as idealized love and pointed out that most average couples are nothing like that. On screen, it does seem pretty nice that Noah builds Ali a whole house with his bare hands. The fact that he refuses to give up on their love and basically lives in a state of frozen nostalgia comes off as kinda sweet, too. As is the way he always writes her without fail. But if a real-life ex pulled half of the stuff Noah does, you'd probably need to have the local police precinct on speed dial. No, you go out What? No! Even Ryan Gosling concedes this point. He told Canada's Tribute, basically, this is a guy who, you know, writes 365 letters to a girl he barely even knows, and then builds a house for her and essentially pretends like he lives in it with her, you know? And in any other movie, this guy's gonna get locked up, but she thinks it's romantic. Noah and Ali's boat ride is probably The Notebook's most iconic scene. Rewatching the film, however, the whole sappy romance of it all tends to be drowned out by one pressing question. How did they get all those ducks to actually cooperate? Well, despite being told by New Line Cinema that shooting a scene with so many birds would never, ever work, director Nick Cassavetes decided he wouldn't be deterred. He went out, bought a load of hatchlings, and had someone march them down to the lake every single day to be fed. Cassavetes told VH1, By the time the movie was shooting, they were kind of grown, but but they had been fed out there every day. So when the studio came down to see the scene, because they didn't believe we could do it, the guy marched them out there like the Pied Piper, and they went out on the lake. Every fan of The Notebook dreams of living in the house Noah built for Allie. And when you hear how much he was selling it for, that dream doesn't seem very far out of reach. $50,000. That's more than my asking price. That's right. It's a great deal more. Sure, this was a different time, so you have to take inflation into consideration, but the thought of scoring that iconic White House for only so little is still enough to give you heart palpitations. Sadly, such a low price tag simply isn't feasible these days. The home used in the movie is an actual real-life residence located at Martins Point Plantation, just outside of Charleston, South Carolina. Although the home isn't on the market and is off-limits to the public, Zillow estimates its current value to be over $2 million. If you're from the South, or if you've ever spent any time in the region during the summer months, you might raise an eyebrow at one particular aspect of The Notebook. Namely, that nobody in their right mind would dare to wear thick cardigans, wool coats, caps, and long sleeves during a sweltering southern summer. We know several of the scenes in which the characters are seen all bundled up or set during the summer because they occur shortly after Ali and Noah first meet. The Notebook's author Nicholas Sparks confirmed this timeline himself. Let's put this into perspective. According to the National Climatic Data Center, the highest the highest max temperature in Charleston, where filming took place during June, occurred in 1944. It was 103 degrees Fahrenheit. And on average, the mean temperature during June hovers just shy of 90 degrees. Coats and scarves? No thanks.